Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make three original beer cocktails, including one that kind of tastes like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, because as much as I'd like otherwise, it is starting to get warm in LA. Uh, cold weather forever, please. Before I get to the recipes, two quick things. First off, none of these drinks have citrus. I'm not against citrus in beer cocktails per se, but I wanted these to be as approachable and easy to put together as possible. And squeezing a lemon, so much work. Second, none of these drinks need to be shaken. As we all know, three of the reasons we shake are to chill, mix, and dilute. As far as temperature, throw your modifiers plus your glass in your freezer for 20 minutes beforehand, and these drinks will be plenty cold. And if incorporation is a concern, you could always dry shake first. Not including the beer, of course. But I think the carbonation from the beer is well sufficient to mix the other ingredients. After all, these are but humble beer cocktails. Just build them in the glass. And that leaves dilution. Since beer is 90 to 95% water already, I have zero interest in adding any dilution to these drinks. I'm also not keen on how added dilution might affect the mouthfeel. And now, onto the drinks. For our first drink, you'll need a can of Kolsch and St. Germain. See? You don't even have to buy a whole bottle to try these. To your glass, add one ounce of St. Germain and top with your Kolsch. This beer is by There Does Not Exist in San Luis Obispo. I don't know much about this brewery, but I do like their branding. Plus, there's bonus beer. Oh man, this would be so nice on a warm day by the pool. Those dry biscuity notes from the Kolsch and the tropical and floral notes from the St. Germain go great together. And easy to adjust the sweetness according to your liking. Nice and easy. Wife. Yeah? Do you want to try this? Which one is this? The Kolsch and St. Germain. Oh. Oh, that's nice. Right? I like that. I'm gonna keep this. You don't even like beer. I don't remember saying that. For drink number two, you'll need a good porter or stout, rye whiskey, and liquid alchemist apple spice syrup, which is made with apple juice, ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. If you can't get liquid alchemist, sup with something apple-y and spicy. Apple-y, spicy, eh. To your glass, add a half an ounce of apple spice syrup, an ounce of rye, and top with your stout. And don't pour too gently, you do want the beer to agitate the other ingredients. It's good. I find a lot of dark beer to have a very subtle prune note, but not in a gross way. And there's just a teensy bit of that here, which I like. And for those keeping score at home, this comes from Second Chance in San Diego. This is something I'd want to sip by a roaring fire. It's boozy and comforting, though by having intrinsically fall flavors, it may be a little early to the party. But I wouldn't let that stop you from trying it. My two cents. And while this drink is great with any porter or stout, I think it works best with something heavy, like an oatmeal stout or even an imperial. But if you go that direction, it will be quite strong, so you may want to share this with someone. But that's up to you. Hey wife, want to try this one? Thank you, which one's this one? It's uh porter, rye, and apple spice syrup. That's good. I don't usually like apple spice, that's nice. Right on. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to the reason you clicked on this video. For this, you'll need a West Coast IPA, Screwball, Campari, and Grenadine. I've always been iffy on flavored whiskey, but I think Screwball works really well here. Here we go. To your glass, add half an ounce of grenadine, half an ounce of Campari, one ounce of Screwball, and top with your IPA. Today I'm using Becky by Ogopogo. Ogopogo's good stuff. If you don't know them, you should check them out. And I know I shouldn't champion laziness, but I love that none of these drinks are garnished. Kind of a weird color. Smells vaguely like peanut butter. It's hard to verbalize quite what this is like. At its most basic, it's like chasing a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with an IPA, but it's also deeply nostalgic, at least to me, because I don't eat PB&Js much, but I was eating a lot of them around the time I got into IPAs, which is longer ago than I care to admit, and this reminds me of that time on a very deep level. This is kind of crazy, and also really good. Shocker, I am something of a snob when it comes to booze, and I never thought I'd endorse buying something like Screwball, but here I am. This could be improved on if you found a way to incorporate actual peanut butter, but again, I'm too lazy to try. If anyone does, let me know how it goes. Wife, you do want to try this. Can you try me this one? IPA and PBJ. Oh, wow. Huh. It's good, right? It was really good. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I didn't name any of these drinks because I don't really like that part of the process. Maybe you guys can help with that too. And of course, I'd love to know what you think, so let me know if you try one. Now, what do I do with these? Turn camera.